formal charges are a way of tracking the electrons in a Lewis structure. A formal charge for any given atom is effectively the charge that that atom would have if it was equally sharing the electrons within its bonds. And the way we can calculate the formal charge is by looking at each atom one by one in the molecule. So we look at every individual atom and we say, if we pick this atom off the periodic table, how many valence electrons would it have? So for our example of the cyanate ion, we have nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Nitrogen should have five valence electrons, carbons should have four, and oxygens should have six. So we take the valence electrons for each atom, and we subtract the electrons assigned to each atom. And assigned electrons are a little bit less clear. Assigned electrons include all non-bonding electrons and half of the bonding electrons. So for the example on the top left, we can look at the number of electrons assigned to nitrogen. Nitrogen has three lone pairs, which means it has a total of six non-bonding electrons. And it has one bond, which has two electrons. So half of that, half of the number of bonding electrons, one half of two is one. So the nitrogen has seven electrons assigned to it. We can do something similar for carbon. Carbon has four bonds each containing two electrons for a total of eight. And if you take half of that, if it was evenly sharing those electrons, carbon has four electrons assigned to it. Oxygen, by a similar note, has two electrons from the non-bonding pair, and it has half of the six electrons in its triple bond. So it has a total of five electrons assigned to it. So we can use these numbers to calculate the formal charges for each atom. Nitrogen should have five electrons in its valence shell, and it has seven electrons assigned to it, so it has a formal charge of minus two. Carbon should have four electrons in its valence shell. It has four assigned to it, so its formal charge is zero. The oxygen should have six, according to the periodic table, and it has five assigned to it. Two from the lone pair and half of the bonding electrons, so a total of five so it has a formal charge of plus one. If we do the same thing for the other examples, we can calculate their formal charges as well. Once we've calculated formal charges for each of these examples, we can decide which one's the most dominant structure. In each case, you should notice that the formal charges all add up to give you the overall charge on the molecular ion, which is minus one. Minus two plus zero plus one, adds up to give you minus one. Minus one plus zero plus zero, also minus one. And zero plus zero plus minus one also gives you minus one. So the way you can decide which of these is the best structure is by looking at the one that minimizes the formal charges and puts any negative charge on the most electronegative atom. In terms of minimizing the formal charges, the first example is out. It has a minus two and a plus one and the other examples only have zeros or minus ones. So the first example is out. We haven't minimized the formal charges. The other two examples have same formal charges, zeros and minus ones, so they've been minimized, but one of them is better than the other. The final example has the negative charge on the oxygen rather than the nitrogen. Oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, so it should have the negative charge. Therefore, while all three of these examples are valid Lewis structures, the one that contributes most is the third one.